with VK Vans, and this is Freebird. She's a Nissan NV2500 high roof, 2012 with 60,000 miles. I discovered van life because I was researching ways to travel around Europe and not have to plan my trip ahead of time. So I decided I wanted to do that. Once I realized that you could rent vans in Europe, I realized that people were doing that here in the United States full term. So the second I discovered that that was a possibility, I went on Craigslist and I put up a, a search tab for sprinters or sprinter styles or high roofs. 48 hours later, a listing showed up at 7 a.m., 7.05, I'm emailing the guy, and later that evening, I'm handing him a check. So in Freebird's past life, she was a chicken catering delivery van. So when I got her, it was completely just a shell with um, some black painted plywood on the floor. She was also covered in a bright pink car wrap that said Mighty Bird Tacos on it. <laughs> Once I removed the plywood, I realized that she was completely caked in chicken grease. And so de-chickening Freebird was a long process, but once I had a clean slate, then I was ready to be changed into this beautiful tiny home. I have pictures of, of when she was completely covered in this magenta Mighty Bird taco wrap. And I actually got Freebird from a repo guy who listed it on Craigslist. So I got a really good deal. And I think that I got a good deal because she was wrapped up in like a, like a big pink chicken. So my background is in sustainable design and green building. And what I've done is I've taken a lot of old homes and torn down all the interior walls and reimagined floor plans. So I have some SketchUp skills and I did many different iterations of what to do with Freebird. At first, the fridge was gonna be over here on the side. Um, you know, I also played with even doing a raised bed, but ultimately I decided that having the ability to open both of the doors and have the free flowing traffic was such a priority that keeping it, that this was like the right floor plan. All right, I need to like, all right, I'm fine. fine. <laughs> this was really the way to have the most countertop space that you could possibly have. I mean, I made the bed as small as possible where you could still comfortably sleep in it and really maximize as much counter space as possible. I mean, this was completely built out so that you can have this the seat pulled back as far as, as it needs to for a really tall person to be able to sit there. So, I mean, I, everything was literally measured to the eighth of an inch. And everything just fits what it's holding. So it's it's really an art where it fits, it's, it's only as big as it has to be to fit everything that's inside of these cabinets. So this is the sink I have a five gallon um, metal jerry can and then this is the five gallon for the gray water and if you look the dimensions of this cabinet are absolutely exactly what they have to be to be able to get these in and out of this cabinetry and it's just as high as it could be as well this window had to be cut out exactly here uh, because of the way that the nissan is from the exterior so this is as high as it can be, and this is as far over as it can be. And then down here, I have a electric toilet. And this is literally, I mean, you have like an inch or two clearance on each side here for the toilet. So, so this is the Laveo dry flush toilet. And it's basically just a pretty expensive bucket with bags, <laughs> essentially. But you press um, the button here, it has these cartridges on the inside. And so each cartridge lasts for about 15 to 17 flushes. So it's one bag that has a bunch of cartridges and then there's an outer bag on the outside. And once the cartridge is done, you just take the outer bag and you throw it away and everything is sealed up and it is just, like so low maintenance, there's no water, there's no chemicals, you don't have to do anything. And I mean, it's, it's kind of amazing. So I went with the Laveo Drive Flush Toilet, which was uh, $600 from Home Depot. I went with this because it is so low maintenance. 
You know, the composting toilet is just a little bit more intensive. You know, you really have to deal with more stuff. <laughs> so this was just like a really easy, a really easy solution. Um, and initially it was just going to be for, you know, maybe just for emergency use. But since I've been living in the van for two months, I use it every day and it's just been great. <laughs> Yeah, I've gotten some some backlash because there is waste with this involved. You know, there is a lot of plastic. That said, compared to how it is in a normal home, I mean, there's no water. You're not wasting any water when you flush. There's no chemicals. So when you compare it to a traditional toilet, I really feel like it is a sustainable option. And it's just been so low maintenance. I'm very grateful. Living in a van, you become so much more conscious about what you're using and how much water you actually use. And so just to think about how many gallons is in each flush, it boggles my mind now that I can, I realize, you know, I can go through five gallons. I can probably last five days with five gallons if I'm really, you know, being careful about how I'm cleaning everything. And so just the fact that I'm saving so much water in this lifestyle, I don't feel too bad about the plastic bags with this. Yeah, my fresh water is five gallons and then gray water is five gallons as well. Initially, I was going to have a shower head uh, attached, but five gallons is like a two minute shower, maybe. So once I realized that, I mean, honestly, at first, when I first went through the five gallons, um, it, it took me like two or three days and I went through that five gallons like that. And that made me realize how I could be more conscious about the amount of water that I'm using. And so now I really try, when I'm washing dishes, I just try to wash things right away and just be much more sustainably minded. I have a gym membership for showers. I have a membership at Planet Fitness. And I find people in small towns on Instagram <laughs> and get shower recommendations quite frequently. <laughs> I also have baby wipes. And so that's fine, you know, I can last. If you're not in uh, Texas, heat you can last a little while so this um i actually just reorganized this but this drawer sort of had become a junk drawer and i went through a couple days ago and i donated a huge box of things which is crazy to think of how much you can accumulate in 60 square feet um, but this is really my office drawer now so i have my computer some uh you know electrical cords business cards and i'm trying to keep it keep it organized and useful so that it's not just accumulating junk. So I was working as an attorney for a few years and I was doing that remotely for an internet company that's in Toronto. And then I've sort of transitioned into managing different corporate accounts. So I work with the accounting department. And I've actually worked remotely for about seven years now. And I didn't know the van life was an option. I didn't really think about the fact that I could be traveling and working at the same time. And once I realized that there's so many people that are digital nomads doing that, I immediately jumped in and I have loved it and I just feel super grateful that I can do that. Yeah, I, you know, I really like this fruit hammock, but I mean, this is, apples just aren't really a great fruit to have in here. <laughs> Unless you want to kind of get it a little softened up, but, <laughs> but it is nice. I, I really like having hooks and things on the walls. You know, I have hooks for hats and coffee mugs and fruit. Using the space in a way where you can put things on the walls definitely is helpful when you only have 60 square feet. So this cabinetry is all reclaimed wood from um, the hill country in Texas. This is 1940s wood that was, um, it's tongue and groove, which you can still see the tongue and groove on the side. And then um, it was glued together and with this backing on here and it just makes a really, a really beautiful door front. And this is really the, the accent piece of the van. And I wanted to keep everything else really simple and bright and white to make the wood stand out. I love using reclaimed materials and sustainable materials. When I did the renovation, I tried to really focus on sustainability as much as I could. So the insulation is wool, which is non-toxic, um, moisture resistant, and sustainable. And then the flooring is also linoleum, which is a renewable resource as well and super, super thin. So you have as much headspace as possible for the tall folks that want to come in here. So the sink was a find from Amazon 
And I mean, it just was a really affordable piece that came with everything all with it, you know, the faucet and everything. So it's a RV sink, so that's why I went with that. And it's small, so this was a really good size. The countertops are from Ikea, so all of this plywood is no formaldehyde added. So this added quite a bit of an extra cost, I'm not gonna lie to you. This was definitely an expensive add-on to do this, but when you're living in only 60 square feet and you're breathing this small amount of air, it's really important to try to keep it as healthy as possible. Since I have done a lot of sustainable building in Austin, Texas, I knew where to get a lot of reclaimed um, wood. So I kind of had the hookup and I found a guy outside of Austin who just had piles and piles and piles. And you know, the wood that is still good for flooring, that wood is super expensive, but all of this is scrap wood that was not quite good enough for flooring. So I was able to get it at about a fourth of the cost. Yeah, it was a really good score. The tiles here are from my travels in Guanajuato, Mexico. I wanted to bring some things in the van that were from places that I love for my different travels. The, this is Tongue and Groove from um, Home Depot. So I hired somebody to do the electrical wiring and to cut out for all the windows. So I had a guy that cut out, I had put in these windows, I put in this vent fan, and so all of the electrical wiring is all above us. So um, there are larger pieces of wood above in the ceiling so that you can have all that wiring go through. And then in between that, you know, all the wool, the wool comes out in bats, so it's really easy to fit into all the different spaces. And you can also take the wool and stick it into all the little holes in the van. I mean, that's something you don't realize when you have a shell of a van. There's just so many little cracks and crevices. So being able to insulate it with the material in those tiny little spaces is really essential and I can tell the difference for sure. I knew I wanted to do tongue and groove because like on the ceiling and on the walls because it is very homey and it has a really great texture to it. So and this material here from Home Depot I mean it was very very thin so it was pretty easy to um, have it bend with the curves of the van which is essential. So that's why I went with the tongue and groove. I love the fantastic fan. I think it's pretty incredible how much air it circulates. When you have two windows open in here, I mean, it just, it lowers the temperature so much. And I actually have never used the AC unit. I don't think I will use the AC unit. I would have to be plugged into shore power if I want to use the AC unit and I just want to be boondocking. So I have a pretty AC unit that I'm not going to be using. So I really like the fan a lot. The location of the fan was a mistake. And this is really something that people should think about. You're going to make mistakes when you're doing your build. And the mistakes that I see most often in green building are honestly electrical outlets. Sometimes people will cut electrical and wire electrical for places that you can't access or that there's cabinetry blocking. And so this was really an issue where, you know, I had somebody put in the fan and put in the AC and he just cut it here. And after that, it was the realization of, wait a second, we want to have upper cabinetry here. You know, what, what do I do with that? And so it worked out really well though, because I wanted this to cut back anyways, because it makes it feel so much more open. If you have one person at the stove cooking and you have one person here cutting vegetables, you want to have more headspace than, than right here. I probably wouldn't have had it cut back this far, but I am happy with the way that it turned out. But it's something to think about, you know, before you cut anything, think about what you're going to do. Because even, you know, one of the lights over here, it, it hits right against the, the AC. And it's, it's so hard sometimes to jump into these projects and to not know all of the different elements while you're doing everything. You really have to keep in mind, you know, where's the plumbing, where's the electrical, where's the cabinetry, how is the overhang going to affect, you know, where you're gonna have your bed. I mean, everything, there's so many details here when you're doing a build. So the lighting, I have these little LED puck lights. I have three across the top. I have one here that is task lighting above the countertop. And then these two accent lights as well. Electrical is quite a learning curve 
And so I delegated that learning curve. I did not really want to know all the nitty gritty about the electrical. And so there are some things that weren't wired as efficiently as they could have been wired. For example, these lights are not wired to be 12 volt right now. So if I were to use these, they're going to suck the battery from the inverter. They're going to suck everything. And I mean, it's just pointless. The same thing with these. These are so cool. But wow, these are extremely inefficient, these little USBs, because of the way that it was wired. So all I use for lighting are these 12 volts. I would probably recommend getting a dimmer if you have the option to get a dimmer on your 12 volt lighting because they're too bright. I usually only use this one and then these, these are battery powered um, little accent lights here. And then I will get these wired to be 12 volt. They're from Ikea, so they can be wired to be 12 volt. And then these will be really nice because this is just a strip light back here. But I actually never use the, those lights really. It's just, it's a little too much. So I have a 4,000 uh, watt Ames inverter and then another battery. And so that all runs off of the main battery, you know, when I'm running the car. I really hardly ever use this. I only use the inverter and turn it on when I need to charge something. So it's only when I'm using these outlets. And what I actually do is when I'm driving, I'll turn the inverter on because it'll be charging while it's, while it's powering these. And I'll plug in my computer. I'll plug in an extra battery that I have that I can charge my phone. And I'll, I'll basically charge everything every time I drive. And so that's really helpful because then I don't have to worry about this, you know, going down too far because I mean, it just goes, it goes through so quickly. I really wanted to do solar, but at the time there was so much storage above the rig that there wasn't any space. So it's wired for solar. And now at this point, I just need to figure out what I need to get. If I need to get something that I can just like plug in and lay out, or if I can get something for the roof, it's really just a, a money game at this point. You know, I spent so much that now I'm just kind of waiting until that moment that the fridge stops working because I didn't drive for three days. And then I'm like, oh, I gotta get solar. <laughs> I could start the car to help the inverter and to, to kind of recharge things, but I think I would have to be running it for quite a while in order, yeah, I mean, I, I basically have to drive every three days before, or the, or the fridge will start yelling at me. At this point, I'm driving every three days, so it's okay. As soon as I want to stay somewhere longer, that's really when I'm going to get the kick in the butt to get solar. Mm -hmm. I want solar, and that was originally the plan, and I think just once all the, the, toys were put on the roof and the AC was put on the roof, just measuring it out. There just wasn't space for a 200 watt solar panel. So the toys aren't up there anymore. So now there's quite a bit of space. So I could put, I could put a pretty large solar panel up there, which I really will do very soon. But so yeah, so down here, so underneath here, I have the, the Ames inverter and I have the other um, marine battery. And then, you know, my panel is here and then I can control everything from up here. And then over on this side, I love this space right here for this little cabinet. It is so nice to have a little bit of open storage and to have a place for my books and a little pot, some greenery. The dimensions of this were kind of made at the, the last minute, really thinking about standing here and working and not wanting to hit your head on a corner. So everything was really thought of in a very detail-oriented way. The same angle here is mimicked down here as well to avoid exactly that, you know, bumping into things as you're walking into this really small space. So taking into consideration little corners is, is really helpful and something I would highly recommend. Also, if you can route all the edges of everything, I mean, it just makes it look like it's so much more finished. It's a really nice look. This upper cabinetry here, you know, also this, I mean, I had uh, cardboard boxes here before I actually did it, you know, taping the cardboard boxes, making it as big as it could possibly be and having people of different heights kind of come here and stand up and see, you know, if you would hit your head. And that's something that you really need to think about because you're, you really don't want to be hitting your head every day in your home. This cabinetry 
is, you know, obviously the same reclaimed wood. I have all of my clothes here. Basically these two have become my closet. This one, I have bedding in here. And then this one was sort of an extra stuff, you know, hammocks and um, climbing gear, things like that. So it's pretty incredible that all my clothes fit in these two cabinets here. But I don't have a lot of winter clothes and I don't have a lot of clothes. I mean, I do laundry every two weeks and I actually have already shipped back two boxes full of things and most of them were clo clothes because I really was only wearing the same thing, wearing the same thing like for two or three days. And I mean, it's van life. Yeah, so these, the gas struts, these were all from Amazon and it's really nice to be able to keep this open uh, without having to hold on to it and be able to dig back in. So I highly recommend that. This also has a soft close on it, which I mean is nice, but I don't really need it. But being able to open your cabinet and being able to access everything, I mean, I highly recommend that. This wasn't very expensive to get at all. So yeah, I highly recommend it. When I first got the van, there were no no windows back here. So I put in these two windows back here. I also put in the window above the kitchen countertop. And then there's also a window on the sliding door. If I were to do this again, I probably would have made these bigger windows. I think that the concern was that, first of all, the more windows you have, the less energy efficient your van is gonna be. You're gonna be hotter in the summer and colder in the winter. And second, the worry about that taking up too much storage space that said, I mean, it's a, these are very small windows. And so if I had done it again, I probably would have done twice as long. But you know, when you see the rigs that are all windows, the entire walls, I mean, those are, those rigs are not gonna be very energy efficient and you're pretty limited uh, if you do want to put any hooks or hang anything on the wall. I hired somebody to cut out and to install these windows which was really great. And then, um, you know, originally this, the windows were framed with white, um, the same sort of, you know, wood here. And it just didn't have the same sort of effect visually. So coming back and getting some reclaimed wood and reframing them out with this wood, I think was really nice because it helps the windows stand out. And since everything is white, it's nice to have those accent pieces throughout the van. So the the back doors were not really finished. I would say that Freebird was about 90% finished before I hit the road. And I mean, it's just one of those things where you can just keep finishing forever. But once if you've set a deadline for when you have to go, you've just got to go. So I ended up later on just kind of getting this little piece of plywood and covering up. Um, I'm probably going to do some storage here. I want to kind of sew um, some storage for maybe my laptop and some different pockets. But for now, you know, this is just raw. And I recently started accumulating some magnets and realizing that this is the perfect accent wall for all of my travels. And I can't believe that I just realized this. I actually got these magnets like the other day and I'm like, oh man, I need to get magnets for all the places I've already been. <laughs> but I'm really excited to see how this, um, how this progresses because I want to keep Freebird really clean, but I want there still to be some character. So I'm excited to, to have this be a little accent wall and have some design back here. I think my favorite thing is going up to some camp spot in the middle of nowhere and opening up these back doors because all of a sudden you're outside. <laughs> you know, your 60 square feet feels like you know, it feels like the whole world, really. And I didn't anticipate this, but Freebird has become the after party spot with all the van people, because a lot of people don't have two access points throughout their van. And when you open this up, I mean, I've had, I've had 10 people in here hanging out. And I mean, it's cozy, but we're having a good time. I think it's having like two different places that you can come in and out also, mm -hmm. because, you know, usually, you would use that whole space for cabinetry, like either either the si sliding door or the back, but I can just hop from the front seat <laughs> into the back here. So, I mean, 
it's yeah it's it's free flowing really so i spent a lot of time in freebird working and that was really the main reason that i wanted this layout because i sit here and i work a lot and so i have one of these back pieces here is the table and i have two places that i can put the table i can either put it here in which case this area could be used as a little lounge seat or I can put the table here so that I have more space, you know, to walk back and forth. And I did that because really, you know, I work remotely, I'm here working a lot. And so that was the priority for me. And really that's the reason that this bench to bed setup was the, the decision that I made because I'm using it as a bench all the time. I did sacrifice having a really comfortable bed the cushions are three inch latex and I went with latex because it is also a non-toxic chemical. There's a lot of chemicals in mattresses that we don't really think about. But once you start thinking about these things, you go down a rabbit hole and you get a latex mattress. <laughs> it's a little uncomfortable. And so I have a three inch memory foam that I roll up underneath one of these cabinets here. And so I pull that out and I lay on top of that. So the, the three inch memory foam is really good for a seat, which I think is pretty important when you're using this as a seat a lot. And I've seen other people mimic this floor plan before and not think about the fact that these cushions have to be your seat and your bed. And I know some people that recently got um, six inch foam and once they try to sit on six inches and lean back on it, I mean, you have this much space for your butt. <laughs> so, I mean, that's something to think about. You know, you really want to have a deep, comfortable seat if you're going to be, you know, using it. I probably work in here four hours a day. And it depends. I, I do work in coffee shops a lot. I like to go to local coffee shops and talk to baristas and you know, get uh, suggestions of places to go and places to boondock, for sure. I do spend a lot of time here on the computer, you know, working at the same time. So I'm, I'm pretty much always, if I'm, if I'm in the van, I'm sitting here with my computer and the table. If you're going to mimic this floor plan, number one, be conscious of how thick your cushions are so that you have enough space to have a comfortable seat. And then also, try to make your bed as large as you possibly can. At the last minute, this lower um, bench seat was cut back a few inches in the, because of concerns about having larger storage, like a bike or something that you would want to put back here. The problem with that is that this, this seat's probably, it's probably 5'8 by 5'9 or 5'10. So if you're six feet tall, this is not going to be a comfortable bed for you at all. So make sure that you make this bed as large as you possibly can. I would have had this go all the way to the door, in which case when this is a um, lounge, you can lean back against the back doors here and really make it like much more of a cozy couch lounge situation. Honestly, even the bed is small for me because yeah, I'm 5'2", but like if you sleep with your arms up, I mean, you really want to make your bed as big as possible. A lot of people ask me about this incline on the seat. And this is just because it's really for ergonomic purposes. This is a, I want to say this was a three inch incline, um, three inch piece right here. And so if you look at any bench seating, they all have the same little, maybe 15 degree incline. And it makes a huge difference. I know it seems like a small thing, but it really makes you feel so much more comfortable when you have this, this natural ergonomic incline here. So this might seem like something you could cut out, but I really recommend doing it. So I'll set this up like a little U-shape with a table because that's like a pretty cool, a pretty cool option. I usually, I have the, the table pole here. I got this from Amazon and I also got the bases from Amazon as well super affordable so you just knock down these little hinged pieces here and make this flat and then these back pieces go like that 
A lot of people asked me why this is doubled up. And this is doubled up because then you can have four back pieces because everything is plug and play. So each of these is like the backrest and they fit in the middle. I did the cushions. I have some sewing experience and I made the cushions a little bit bigger than they needed to be so that you had to kind of make it real snug to avoid having the cracks in the middle here. So that you can have somebody chill in here, relaxing, and then, you know, here working. So you have this U shape and it's so much more space. I'm not a creature of habit, so I really switch this up a lot. I mean, sometimes I will just make this portion the bed and I'll sleep this way. Sometimes I will make the whole bed and I'll sleep in the other direction. So it really depends on how I'm feeling and how much stuff I have <laughs> hanging around that I need to move aside. But so the sleeping is pretty unpredictable. That changes a lot. But every day I make this into the bench because I like having the openness. I always have the back doors open and I always have the table set up somewhere. Usually I have the table set up in the back because then it's out of the way. This was in case, you know, I had pets or more people here that were chilling and so that this could be an extra counter if I wanted to um, use it when I'm cooking. But I actually don't need that because I actually have a pretty decent amount of counter space. So I don't keep the table here this often, but it's nice to have this as an option. But yeah, I would have to like kind of twist it if I want to be moving around. So typically the table is back there, but this is nice in case somebody wants to take a nap. I painted everything white. And if I were to go back, I would probably maybe do like a white wash on the wood instead of painting all the wood white, because I mean, it really does get dirty very quickly. You may not be able to see it in a video or in a picture, but when you're in it, you're oh, all you see it. So this is an option where you can have half of this set up like a bed and then half of this set up like a little dinette area. But really, if you want to sleep comfortably, you're going to want to make this whole thing into a bed. So then these back pieces here also go in the middle, just like the other two. Unburn. So yeah, this is really the full bed setup. And then I put that little uh, three inch memory foam mattress. I usually roll it out right here in the middle and sleep here. And then you don't really feel any of the cracks. So it's, it's pretty comfortable. And I mean, the width of this bed is pretty much a queen size mattress. So it's really just the length that you're missing. And if you were to build out this back area here, uh, you can put cushions there, then you could sleep here comfortably if you're six foot or, or taller. I'm still sort of figuring out which way I wanna sleep and how I wanna set up the bed. For a while, I was just setting up this back portion here just because it was easier. But last night, for example, I made the whole bed. I set up the, the mattress. Sometimes I don't even pull out the three inch foam mattress. I mean, sometimes I just, I just go to sleep on here and it's fine. But you know, last night I was like, let's just, let's get comfortable. Let's see how it is. And I set up the whole bed. I put the mattress this way. I slept this way. And it was, it was like one of the best night sleeps I've had in a while. So I think I need to just bite the bullet every night and just make the whole bed and do that because sleep's very important. I know a lot of people who have the same size rigs and they have full mattresses that are these really thick lush mattresses that they keep all the time. And I am getting more and more envious of those people as I'm traveling, but they don't have a really comfortable place to sit in here. And every time I have somebody come in here and hang out, I'm just, I realize how valuable it is because this is just such a cozy place to chill. I mean, you can play cards. Yeah, it, literally every after party happens in my van. <laughs> I, I need to like have chunks, like 
I, I met a guy here who was kind of just showing me around. He showed me where there's some free showers and stuff. And we hung out for a day or two. And then I'm like, okay, bye. I'm like, I'm done with social mode. I'm into work mode now. I'll be in that mode for like 36 hours. So I'll talk to you later. My favorite part about this layout is being able to sit here and just have these doors open all the time. I mean, you, you're not living in 60 square feet anymore. You're living outside, basically. And I mean, this is just such a beautiful place to be. And I'm, yeah, I, I love, this is like what van life is about for me, is having my table here, working, chilling with coffee, and just enjoying being outdoors, basically. I knew that I wanted a sprinter style rig in the sense where I could have these back doors open. I knew that that was gonna be a really important uh, essential part of being able to live in 60 square feet, both having the high roof so that you can stand up and having this open space. I definitely love being able to have this and you know I do sort of sacrifice storage a little bit by not having a permanent bed that's raised with storage underneath but it's really worth it to be able to have this this flow of traffic. The, the bench seat storage is pretty amazing. You can fit a lot of stuff down here. And so it's really nice to have this access here if you have like some shoes, if you go climbing and you wanna just throw your gear here instead of having to lift up the seat, that's really nice. So it's nice to have access both from the side and from the top, and it looks nice. The hooks, I highly recommend hooks. Hooks are a big part of van life. You wanna have as many hooks as possible. This is my three burner stove, which is, a little excessive. I don't think I've ever actually used three burners at once, but it's really nice to have, you know, in case I wanted to do that. I have pretty much all of my kitchen storage in this drawer here. Once you live in a van, you realize that you don't really need more than one fork, <laughs> maybe two in case you have company, you know, two bowls, two plates, two forks and you're good to go. I've got one coffee cup and I'm fine. Since I moved the fridge up here in between the two front seats, I was able to have a really great place to have trash. When I was staying in a van for a month in Europe last summer, trash was the biggest issue. There was no place to put your garbage and so really garbage just accumulated everywhere you know, underneath the bed, along by the door. And so that was something I really wanted to be aware of. So I have dedicated trash and dedicated recycling. There's no recycling in Mammoth where I am, so that, that one's full. <laughs> and then if you look, I mean, this cabinet was, was built exactly for these pull-out units. There's an eighth of an inch of clearance on each side and above. So this was really made as small as it possibly could be to fit the purpose of the trash and recycling. So when I'm cooking, what I typically do is I will raise up this counter here. And this is really all the space that I need. This is awesome. I spent a long time figuring out how small I could make this door opening. And so this is just about 24 inches and it's a little tight but it's just for ingress and egress, so it's, it's fine, you know? So this is pretty big and I definitely cut this down, but it works, it works fine and it's a great use of space. For the three burner stove, I have a propane tank here. It's underneath this seat and I have one of the smallest little propane tanks that you can get. And honestly, it's already lasted me for 10 weeks and I make coffee every morning. I boil rice, I make egg salad. I mean, I've been using it. So propane's kind of amazing. Since living in the van, I cook in here pretty much 80% of my meals, maybe even 85% of my meals. I have sort of made a list, a mental list of about six or seven different dishes that I can make and save or a week. So I will go to the store and I'll buy, you know, a bunch of things to make a fruit salad for breakfast that I could eat on for a week, you know, a meal for lunch and a meal for dinner, and I'll just cook everything at once. And then I have, I have more to-go containers than, you know, I probably should in the van, but I really keep them full all the time because I just knock out my meals for the week. 
really the only times that I go to restaurants, I go to coffee shops a lot for working. So I always end up buying something there. But honestly, every time I buy something there, I'm like, why did I buy this? You know, I'm eating a muffin and I'm like, oh, I could be having like this healthy broccoli salad I have in the van. So I really don't eat out that often unless a place is really highly recommended. Or, you know, if I meet some people on the road and we go out to dinner, but mainly when it comes to eating and drinking, I buy coffee and I'll get beers with people that I meet. I do that a lot. I love this kitchen setup. I am super happy with this kitchen setup. I mean, if you think about it, I have everything that I need. Realizing that you don't need a lot of kitchen stuff, you can fit most of your kitchen stuff in one drawer, you know? I mean, I usually, I have a hook here for a coffee mug and I was thinking about getting more hooks for, you know, pots and pans, but everything just fits right in here. This is a really deep drawer, so I'm happy with that. I love being able to sit here or stand here and um, cook, have my coffee, have my water boiling, and have this door open so that I can enjoy the view and, you know, see outside. I put in this, win this window here because of that reason. It's really nice to have a high window at night, you know, I can leave that open and not worry about someone being able to see in because I'm just so much higher. And then during the day, it's at eye level. So if it is cold outside or raining, I still have some light coming in. It's really nice to have light in your kitchen where you're cooking. And so having this window too, I mean, this is really nice task lighting, just the natural light that comes out here. You know, if you think about it, people always have under, under cabinet lights. And that's really the reason is because you want to have this light for anything that you're doing. One huge score is this upper cabinetry here. This is kind of insane, like how deep this cabinetry goes. Um, this whole thing was, was ripped out and I'm so grateful that I decided to do that because capturing the space for storage is amazing. I mean, it's really deep. I've got camera gear, sleeping bag. These are all my window coverings. So this is the stuff that I use every day. And I like that this is a little bit lower than the other cabinetry there since I'm short. Um, I can pretty easily access this. So it's like the convenient go-to. And then what I decided to do was have this cabinet hinge this way so that I could have a little makeshift vanity. So all of a sudden my kitchen turns into a little bathroom setup, which is really nice. So, you know, I can kind of feel like I'm in a, a home, you know, brushing my teeth and washing my face and accessing everything. I've all, you know, toiletries and stuff here, everything for when I shower and, um, you know, cleaning supplies. So it's funny how the little things make such a big difference, but this, I mean, seriously, being able to kind of brush my teeth and feel like I'm in a regular bathroom and getting ready is invaluable. So just making that little change was a pretty big difference. Yeah, I was really, I was like, oh, this needs to do this. <laughs> cause you know, you, like, cause I'm very much like thinking about how is this gonna work? Like I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna stand here and I'm gonna do this. Where's my toothbrush? Where's this? You know, cause you want everything to be reachable and easy in this sort of situation, especially if you're building a home out of nothing, you know? So I really did a walkthrough of, I'm at the sink, what do I do, you know? And that was when I had the idea to turn this into a little storage area for the bathroom stuff. Another eureka moment was realizing that the fridge could go in between these two front seats. I decided to rip off the armrests here. The fridge is basically the same height as the armrest, so you still have that armrest if you really need it. In Europe, when I rented a van, I used a Dometic fridge that, had, that was a pullout, and I really liked that, and I thought about that a lot, but the dimensions of it just didn't quite work with this setup. It's a little bit smaller of a unit, um, and it just, it needed to be too deep. So when I realized that I could get this Dometic fridge and it would fit perfectly, it was like, ah. <laughs> and this fridge is huge. I mean, I can fit multiple gallons of milk if I really want to. I've got all of my to-go containers with all of my food that I make. And it's, it's really, I love this thing. So the fridge is 12 volts, which is really great. And, you know, I can 
run it for three days without even turning on the car because it just runs through the inverter. So this is um, also, I have got this little platform here that holds it in place, which is really important. It's really nice to have the fridge when you're driving because I have it open this way so that I can easily get a drink if I want or get a snack. And since I'm a short person, I hop in and out here multiple times a day. I don't really ever even use this front door here. I just hop back here because I keep all my stuff back here. So I just hop in and out. And that's actually, you know, when people talk about a van versus a trailer, I would be, I would be a mess in a trailer because I kind of just leave stuff all over the place and I would be in my front, you know, truck and I'd think, oh crap, my purse is in the trailer. Oh crap, this is in the truck, you know? And so being able to have everything in one space is essential for me. Super convenient. So I made these curtains and what I decided to do is this is a pretty fabric and then on the other side I have a thermal fabric. And the difference when this is open and closed is night and day. I highly recommend getting some thermal curtains, even if you do cover them with something else, if you have like a different design, because it makes a huge difference, like, you know, 10, 15 degree difference. I mean, I'll open this and it'll be hot up in the front here, but in the back, it's completely comfortable. And I also did that with all of the window coverings as well. Anytime you have glass, you're going to lose a lot of heat and so the window coverings that I made are the same material here and then inside here they have the thermal curtains and then I have Reflectix on the other side as well. Yeah I made these and these all fit perfectly in the frames so that you know I can just kind of stick them up and they fit in all of the window frames perfectly and it helps me be stealth. Nobody knows that I'm in here. I can have all of the lights on in here and nobody has any idea. There's some space here. Since I am short, it's really nice that I have some space between the driver's seat and this cabinet here. You know, I had the cabinet where it is in case someone really tall is driving. So that's why it didn't go all the way over. And it's fine because I can use this space for storage. So I have a little container for all of my shoes that I stick back here. And I can also put, you know, an extra jug of water or two there. It's really convenient. So that's nice and out of the way. Driving Freebird has been a little bit of an adjustment for me. I have only driven really small vehicles before and all of a sudden driving a van and a van with a pretty big truck nose has been an interesting experience. But you know what? I just have gotten really used to making 10 point turns and not being shy about it. So I, it's fine at this point. Like I'm always stepping out and kind of checking things. And as I drive more and more, I'll become more comfortable and have a better idea. And um, I probably will get a backup camera at some point too. I think that's a good purchase. Freebird gets 14.5 miles per gallon. You know, I've got a lot of wood in here. There's a lot of cabinetry and it's, it's my home. So I have had some people have a reaction thinking that that's really good and some people having a reaction that that's really bad. And I mean, for me, it's an adjustment, but it is what it is. For music, I just have a little Bose speaker that I, that I charge and I just kind of put it wherever throughout the van. I have an auxiliary cable, but I just, I don't really use it. So, you know, the van was wired for speakers. The van was wired for hot water. The van was wired for an AC. These are all things that either I would have to be plugged into shore power to use, um, they're not working, or I just don't need them. So sometimes a more simple build is kind of better than doing all of the bells and whistles. And if I were to go back, I probably would have made some of those cuts and really just focused it on what do I need, you know? I think the biggest thing I would cut out is the fact that I have an electric hot water heater that doesn't work. And you know, sometimes you delegate things and you think, and the people are professionals, but you need to make sure that whoever you're hiring is gonna tell you when something's not gonna work, or they're gonna tell you if there's a better way to do something. Because I, you know, maybe the goal is to be able to charge your phone through USB. Like, oh, that's really cool. But if that's going to drain the battery, then I want to be told about that, 
you know? And I'm like, well, why did you do it that way to this guy? And he's like, oh, Justin wanted that. I'm like, but why didn't you tell him it wasn't gonna work? I'm like, so yeah, so I have like all these things that don't work that are expensive. Yeah, lessons learned. I didn't think that I'd be able to live without hot water, to be honest. That was kind of the one thing that I wanted was to be able to wash my dishes with hot water. And now I don't care at all. I think that if you're cooking with a lot of bacon, you probably want hot water because grease is gonna go everywhere. But since it's just me in here, and since I typically cook vegetarian, it's fine. I don't need the hot water. If I really need it, I'll boil a little bit of extra water with my coffee water, and then I'll do the dishes in the morning after I you know, pour my coffee with that extra hot water. That's kind of a routine of mine. Thanks so much for checking out Freebird. If you wanna find out more about our adventures on the road, check out Vacay Vans, YouTube and Instagram. <laughs>